today is because that's my whole goal in life. Again, my name is Doc Yellow. That's me. That's me in my uh, military uniform. That's after I came home from Afghanistan. I served 26 years in the United States Army. I fought under both bushes in two wars. Uh, Desert Storm back in 1990 and 91 and Afghanistan and Europe Freedom in 2002 and 3. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, my claim to fame that I would call it is the fact that I went over twice. One time as a subordinate, as a soldier, and I felt then that I had to make sure that all my people got back alive. The second time I went over as a commander, and I made sure that all of my people got back alive. And I told them before we left going over that if I didn't bring all y'all back, I wasn't coming back home. And I meant it. And I was very, very lucky, very, very blessed to have done that. With that being said, Lessons in Life is an album that I worked on for 20 plus years because I served 26 years in the military so I didn't have the time to be able to put into it the way I wanted to. By profession, I was a soldier, I'm a mailman, and I own two companies. I own my own recording studio, I DJ, and I do photography and videography. And I'm saying that to say that on a regular basis, I come out to schools, uh, I go to the juvenile detention center in Chicago, and just on the streets at random, I run into youngsters every day, and we get conversations going, because I need to know what's going on with you. The basic thing is, a lot of our youth, especially our young males, are uh, without leadership and without parenting from a male perspective. And unless we can re-implement that, we're gonna have a problem. So I wanna make this kind of interactive. So I'm gonna ask y'all some questions and feel free to answer. And I want you to be as honest as you possibly can. Because I know a lot of y'all are facing adversity or problems on an everyday basis that sometimes you don't have a male figure or somebody older that can guide you in the right direction to talk to. So with that being said, I like to, by show of hands, how many people in this room has a friend or know somebody that's been a victim of gun violence? Raise your hand. Wow. That's the majority of people in this room. And that's not a good thing. Put your hands down. Now, back in the days, if somebody got into something as uh, simple as a fight, it was a fight, the fight was over with, and we was friends the next day. You had to know how to throw the things. Who's familiar with that? Anybody in your box? Also. Okay. Oh, okay. So we we got the ring. We could, you know. I don't know. My reach is kind of wicked now. <laughs> I see you got that center of gravity, but my reach is wicked. But at the end of the day, if that fight happened and it was over, you lived. Right now, we're at a point where we got kids that can't go outside and play. You can't step outside your door and play. And right now, there's a level of disconnect between the elders and the children. By show of hands, how many youngsters on these seats feel like they have grown people or elders that don't talk to them, but talk at them? So is it safe to assume that if you wanted to have a conversation, you don't feel comfortable that you're going to have a conversation and that you're going to be talked down to? Okay. That's, that's what we need to change. So what I did to try to help implement this change is I put together an album. And the album is called Lessons in Life. And I'm gonna let y'all pass these around and look at it because I want y'all to be able to tell me something about the cover. 
Just grab one and pass it around. I want you to take note, pass it around, and look at it and tell me something about the cover that you find unique. I'm going to pass some out over there, too. And I'm asking this for a reason. I want you to tell me what the difference is in the album cover that you see right now and the album covers that you see on a regular basis. I want you to tell me the first unique feature. And when you got it, raise your hand. All right, stand up. What's the unique feature about this album cover that you see that you don't see normally on album covers? Um, looks like you got somebody on the screen. It looks like you got somebody that's uh, important. Oh. Okay, he said, look, he said it looks like I got somebody on the street and somebody that's in war. All right. You, Mr. MMA. Uh, it seems like, it seems like this is you playing chess with yourself. Bingo. And it's... <laughs> All right, he got it, he got it. What's your name? The bell. The bell got it right on. Both of them actually have it. But what he said is, he said it seems like somebody in war and somebody on the streets. Now, how many people play chess by a show of hands? Okay. So, would it be safe to say that chess is a game where you waiting on your opponent to make a, make a mistake so you can capitalize? Yes, no, maybe. All right, so with that being said, lessons in life is exactly that. I'm playing a game of chess with myself. Basically, my military personality is playing a game with my civilian personality. And the whole thing behind the title Lessons in Life is I learn from my own mistakes. Now, there's another unique feature about this album. It's something that's there's something about the cover that's different from every other color cover that's out there right now. Can anybody tell me what that unique feature is? Uh, I got one. What you got? Be nervous. What you got? That there is no guns. There is chest. No guns. Okay, that's part of it. That's one of them. I think we got the answer coming. It ain't, you ain't flashing money around. You know what I mean? The, the, the blind people. All right, no money. It's still not the answer I'm looking for. There's one unique feature. If you picked up an album by Jeezy, by Plies, by Chief Keith, by uh, Lil Durk, what would you find on that album cover that you don't find right now? Like Red Dog's Library. You got your family in there. Say again? You got your family in there. Somebody in there. If you, if you bought a Lil Durk album, if you bought any album in hip hop or rap right now, now there's something that they put on it, that they put on there that's not there. What you got? Something that's missing. I can't believe nobody got this yet. No bad words on it? No bad words. No bad words. That means that there is no warning sticker on it. No warning sticker. You know why? Because there is no profanity on the album. There is no cursing on the album. And I did that for a reason. Because how many people honestly listen to music and when their mothers or somebody grown walk in the room, they gotta turn it off? We can be honest. Ain't nobody gonna get in trouble. But how many people have to turn it off once their parents come in? And why is that? Is it because your parents don't want to hear the cursing? Or you don't want to get caught listening to it? You listen to it no matter what. So it's cool to listen to it in front of your parents. Oh, you put the earphones in so you don't play it out loud. Okay, but that's what my point is. I made the album with no profanity for a reason because I wanted to be able to play it in front of any and everybody. And the intro track explains that. At a certain point, I thought I had the album finished in 2006, and my mother was still alive. And one day my mother asked me, could she hear my album? And when I tell you, I had ride or die cussing on it. I mean, I was going hard. I just came home from a war, 
and I was letting out everything that was on my mind. But when she asked me, could she hear it? I knew that I had to make a change because at the same time, if I was gonna be successful in this industry, how can you be successful and not share your success with the people you love? If you gotta turn it off, if you gotta bleep out every word, say again. Okay, hey, that's a good point. That is a good point. He said like Will Smith, because he didn't want his grandmother to hear him. How many people actually cuss in front of their parents? You do? Wow, okay. We got two, we'll say two out of about 30. But I don't. With that being said, I would like to play a track from the album and um, tell you a little bit about, a little bit more about the album. What I did is, it originally had 10 tracks on it. It's got 13 now. And three of the tracks I wrote because of people like yourselves, youngsters. I went into a school, Oakdale Christian Academy, and I asked them what type of music they liked. And it was all black school. So I knew what the answer was before they asked. They said hip hop and rap. I said, okay, I, was, I had on a suit that day. And I said, well, do you think I can convince you I was a rapper? And the overall unanimous was no. And I said, why not? They said, because you speak too well, your pants ain't hanging off your butt, you're not disrespectful, and you don't have a bunch of tattoos. How many by show of hands think that that's what makes up a hip hop artist? I'm shocked, it's the minority in here. But in a group, in a group of fifth, sixth, and seventh graders, they all thought the same thing. They thought that you were incapable of rapping if you weren't, cur if you weren't cursing and you weren't being disrespectful. So with that being said, I want to play a track or two. I'm going to um, pull out my laptop and play this song called City On My Back. And then I want to ask some questions about it. And based on the answers that I get, it will determine what type of prizes I give out amongst the group. And then I want to ask some questions that's directly affecting y'all, because I need to know what's going on in your neighborhoods and the reason that you're even here tonight. Are we good with that? Now that was the first single off of the Lessons in Life album, City On My Back. And I wrote that song because of what those children told me at Oakdale Christian Academy. Basically, you couldn't rap because you spoke a certain way, because you didn't have a bunch of tattoos, you wasn't disrespectful, and your pants wasn't hanging off your butt. I say that to say this, I work a job, I own my own business, but I'm doing what I want to do. You see this? I pay for all of that. I own my own photography company. I DJ. People try to make you think that you gotta be a drug dealer. You gotta be a criminal in order to make money. They think it's lame to be educated, but I know different. And what's sad is a lot of our people become successful and they don't come back and share that information, how they got successful and what you need to do to get where they are. Would any of you agree with that? How many doctors do you see coming back into the neighborhood telling you what you should do? <laughs> he said you don't have a black doctor. Hey, but that's real. I like the fact that you vocal about what you think. I mean, what, what type of people would you like to see come back and give back and share opportunities with you? People that look like you, that's motivation. That's what I'm talking about. All right, does anybody else agree with that? Would you like to see more people that look like you coming back telling you what you should do in order to be successful? Sharing some of their time and some of their experience to help you get to the next level. Is there anybody else that would like to chime in on this? You said it's pros and cons? What are the cons? Okay, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And that's the whole thing in a nutshell. Now, I don't know, how many of y'all from Chicago or been to Chicago? All right, cool, what side of town? How many West Siders in the building? West Side? My man, that's what I'm talking about. Congress of California, baby. 
I'm a West Side man to the bone. There you go. There you go. All day long. But that's why I'm here. Because he said, he said, you're an OG. And, well, yeah, I mean, I'll be 50 next month. 50. Oh, West End? Oh, man, show you right. Any South Siders in the building? We can't leave out the South Side. They get salty. <laughs> I actually have a house on the South Side, so I got to represent, too. <laughs> But like I say, I'm from the West Side. I'm a true blue West Side. And my whole thing is to show you this. I come from the West Side. I come up with some of the hardest criminals you ever want to meet in your life. And a lot of them locked up and dead right now. But the difference between me and them is the fact that when they said we're going to smoke weed or we're going to do this or that, I was like, I'll holler at y'all later then. Because I had parents that would beat me senseless. The skin would be missing. And it wasn't no call in child abuse or DCFS. Because if you picked up that phone, see we had the phones where you had to dial and the number had to come back. So by the time you hit that first number, it was over. It was over, but I appreciate that. Now I'm gonna share something with y'all. How many people in here, by show of hands, have been in the classroom and might not be the A student, but when they, uh, when they asked a the question, they were scared to raise their hand because they didn't want any clown because they really didn't know the answer. All right, we got a couple of honest people here. I like that. That was me. That was me, for real. I went to Marshall High School. And I started in Chicago on the west side, but I graduated in Georgia. And that's because I left. I left because I was standing next to the guy that got shot on two different occasions. One time on Congress and Harrison, I mean on California and Harrison, in front of a tavern, and another time in front of Marshall High School. So I figured the third time might be a charm. So I asked my mother, could I move down south and finish high school? Now, in doing that, I got put back two years. Now, at that point, I couldn't came back to Chicago, went back to Marshall, possibly finished, possibly stayed alive, or I could have stayed down there and knew that I have about a 75% chance of living. So I decided to stay down there. But I did finish. And that's the key. No matter what anybody tells you, don't listen to the people that haven't done what you want to do. If you want to accomplish something, you got a dream, you got something that you want to do, man, absolutely. Do what you need to do. How many people got that friend that's always doing something wrong? Nine times out of 10, if they go out to do something, you really don't want to go, but sometimes you feel like, I got to go, that's my home. Okay, think about it like this. Now, a lot of people raise their hand when they say they got homies that's been shot or they know somebody directly that's been a victim of neighborhood violence. Everything comes down to a series of choices. And that split, section, that split decision that you make in a critical moment is what's going to be the difference between you living and dying. Achieving what you want to achieve or failing. The difference between being free to sit out here in the audience or being locked up. How many people think that if you go to jail or get shot, you got street credibility and that's good for you? Okay, you say you think you do get it, but you don't want it. But how many people, how many people have seen where if you had a choice to give a party to somebody, your man that just got out of prison or the guy that just graduated college? How many people know the guy that's going to prison or just got out of prison would get the party? I know quite a few of them. <laughs> And most of the people that I used to hang with, and the key word is used to hang with, would rather go to that party for the guy that just got out of prison instead of celebrating that person that's got some agitation and got something in front of him to shoot for. Him. The whole thing is, I made good decisions. I tried to show those try to show those things to my son. I have a son that'll be 20 next month. And he decided. He decided in high school that he wanted to be a weed smoker. He wanted to be high. He was playing basketball. He was good too. 
But he decided he wanted to go to practice high one day. And the coach called and said, man, your son is off the team. Why is he off the team? Man, he came, he came to practice high. Okay, cool, that's no problem. So he was going to St. Joseph. Now I don't know how many of y'all know about St. Joseph, that's out in Westchester. That school was costing me $8,000 a year to send him there. The minute he got kicked off that team, he was in Collins. I'm like, I'm not gonna pay for you to go to school so you can throw the money away. I'm trying to give you a better opportunity. So with that being said, I'd like to say, what we need to do, we need to start respecting our parents. But as parents, we need to start listening to our children. We need to start paying attention to them. Because the parent is the first line of defense. The parent is the first line of defense. They go to bat for the child no matter what the child does. And a lot of times the child will be wrong. How many people got that mother that would be like, my baby ain't did that? Honestly. Now how many of y'all are really mad and you know you done did something, you know mama done went and fought for you, and you was dead wrong? I love the honesty. I love the honesty. Okay, see, I got an appreciation for your parents. I'm giving you two, I'm giving you two CDs. <laughs> one for you, one for mom, for real. I say that because we gotta close this gap. How many of y'all expect to go to jail at some point in your life? How many of y'all been in jail? <laughs> Me too. But I went, I went in 2006. But when I went, it was because somebody used my identity. And I say that to say this. I had a job working for Motorola. I used to make cell phones. And every month, they would celebrate birthdays with the employees. So think about this for a second. If you celebrate birthdays, somebody is writing down your information. Think about this. They write down your information. Oh yeah, his name is Quincy Jones and he was born July 20th. Now, they know where you work at. We work in the same building. Now imagine if you was trying to save money and you were carpooling to go to work. Guess what? They know your address. Now, how many people had thought of these things before? Hadn't crossed your mind, had it? All right, check this out. Now, you go out and you commit a crime. I know your name, or I go out and I commit a crime. I done celebrated your birthday with you. I done picked you up to take you to work. I know all your information. Somebody did that with my information. And guess what? They knew I was in the military. So they knew I didn't have a criminal record. Because you can't have federal identification and have a criminal record. This dude was fighting police. He got arrested, he spit off my name, spit off my address, spit off my birthday, and they let him go. About a year later, my father, who died in 97, I had given him a car. He told me that, you know, you got a warrant out for you. And he had fallen asleep, he used to drink a lot. He was drunk one day, fell asleep in the car. Told me the police stopped him, told me I had a warrant out. I said, man, you was drunk, you don't know what you're talking about. I ain't never been stopped by the police. Cause I was dressed right dressed, straight up, stand tall and look good. So I thought he didn't know what he was talking about. After he died, I got stopped by the police one time. And they told me, Mr. Brinson, we have a warrant out for your arrest. I was like, how is that possible? I ain't never been stopped before. And then, they ended up letting me go. They took my fingerprints, they inconvenienced me. They detained me for a couple of hours. My prints came back, and they came back clean. But what I'm trying to say is, be very, very careful about what information you let get out. Because identity theft is one of the biggest things going, and people are capitalizing off of it. How many people got a parent that possibly put a phone bill or a gas bill in their name before? Okay, yeah, we got a couple of hitters being honest. I wrote a song about that too. My whole thing is I'm trying to talk about things that happen to people on an everyday basis. Is your credit messed up now? Is your credit good? Okay, that's cool, that's cool. 
But we all know somebody that's happened to. With that being said, be careful about letting your information get out. Communicate with your parents. How many people in here smoke? Cigarettes, weed? <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> I love it. Hey, I'm the same way. I'm honest about everything. I give it to you. If you want to know the answer, ask me. You guys gotta go. But if you're scared of the answer, you might want to hold back. What I want to do now, I want to go over another song called The Question. And I want to see what y'all get from the song. How many, how many of y'all got something from sitting on my back? Did you actually hear what I was saying? Huh? You saw the truth. What did you What did you get from that song? How many people heard that before? How many people have heard what she just said before? Then let me ask you something. Why is this such an epidemic? Why is it that our young men constantly walk around that way? If you know what it represents. They think that because they're um, the people, they role models like Chief Keep and stuff is that maybe they should. No. You listen to the music though, right? You don't listen to the music? How many people listen to Chief Keep? Really? Lil Derek? Slim Jesus? <laughs> Drake? Alright, what about uh, J. Cole? That's my man. Kendrick Lamar? See, I got a group of intellects today. I like, the, I like this group. I love the intellects. Because that's what I'm about. You say hood music and true music. Come down here for a minute. I like you. Him and my man, the red hat. Man, y'all need to be on my team. I like y'all for real. Tell me what you, now tell me what you just said. Um, I like Little Herb because it's hood music, but it's true music. Like, when you say hood music, give me I say hood because hood, because hood and street is different. Hood is, you know, you know what goes on in the streets, but you choose not to gang bang. Okay. Uh, street, a street person is somebody who knows the streets, gang bang, and does all this, that, and the other. Now he's telling, he's telling about the average person in the hood. He's not being the average person in the hood. He's just telling you how it goes, the system. It's, it's like being a product of your environment. Okay, and that's the, that's the hood. And, that, and that's, that's the, that's the hood. Yeah, but there's truth in what he is saying. Now the hood person is cheap. Okay, yeah. The, the no intellect, no dialogue, the ad libs that make no sense, and the, and the hit. And the reason why people like it is because they make that lifestyle. Like I know a person in my classroom. I'm I'm in college now, so I know a person who's in. I'm class of fifteen. I graduated the last year. But, uh, <laughs> but I know a person in my class, you know what I'm saying, 3.5 GPA, ain't never been in a fight in his life, but will bump some Chief Keith in the room. Like, you don't even live like that. Why do you like it? I don't know. Exactly. Exactly. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Give it up for my man right here. Give it up. Because he's telling the truth. A lot of these people that make this music, they aren't living that lifestyle. But it's influencing young people, it's influencing those who listen to it, to go out and do it. You cannot, it's music. You gotta think about it, it's music. It's just like a movie. Yeah, if you go to a movie and you see somebody get shot, does that mean that you go out and shoot? No. Yes, no, maybe. No. Why? So basically, what you're telling me is you know the difference between reality and fiction, what's put on for the television or radio. you see somebody doing something that they shouldn't be doing, you should learn from it and do the opposite and do something good instead of bad. Well, right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay.
Well, I'm going to tell you something. Hope renewed. This, this room has been renewed by hope. Y'all need to give yourself a round of applause because y'all y'all are a very, very intelligent group of young people. Now, what I need to do is be able to have the same dialogue with those people who are committing the infractions that we're talking about. And I deal with them on a daily basis. I deal with people that are in a juvenile detention center on Roosevelt Road in Chicago. And I've actually interacted with some of the actual shooters. And a lot of them, what they're saying is, the guns are being passed to them. They're being passed to them, and they're just going out doing what somebody told them to do. My thing is this. If somebody told you to eat poison or drink poison, would you drink it? Bingo. Now, those same people, they mamas will tell you, no, nah, my baby didn't do that. Like I just asked y'all, my baby didn't do that. My baby ain't capable of that. But I just saw your baby shoot. But I just saw your baby shoot. Your baby is bad as H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> the thing that we gotta do is make that split decision, that split decision that's gonna, uh, that's gonna determine whether we gonna make it here or be here tomorrow. And I am very, very collectively happy with the group that I'm sitting in front of. Y'all seem to be very intelligent. Let me ask you a question. And this is, this is important. How many people can rock to the mic the type of music that I put out today? Honestly. Why? Thank you. I appreciate that. And I made it because I wanted music that y'all can enjoy, but I put music on there that the elders could enjoy. And I did that so that we could bridge the gap, so we could sit down and have this forum and have y'all talk to each other and not have them talk at you. In other words, I would mediate the dialogue, and as soon as I see them talking at you, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Now, they respected you before, but you got to respect them in the same concept. And we need to have that open forum. How many people agree with that? Yes? No? Can I hear something? Let me know. Let me know if you agree. All right, man, that's what we need to do. We need to open up that dialogue and we need to get that going. So I want to play another song. It's called A Question. I wrote this song in a day. Yes. How did I get from that to that? And you know what? Okay, I'm glad you said that because I'm going to play it. What I did, I was a commander of a unit. And I've been deployed twice. I was going to get deployed for a third time. And when I was supposed to go back over for my third deployment, they wouldn't let me go. They told me that I was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Oh, it's a real thing. It's a very, very real thing. And in doing that, I was upset because I wanted to go where my soldiers were. So basically, before my mom died, she asked me why wouldn't I get out of the military. And I told her that my soldiers were like my kids. I say, the same way that you would fight for your children, I would fight for my soldiers. And I can't get out of the military because if I get out right now and something happens to one of my soldiers, I got to live with that guilt for the rest of my life. So I told her that after I trained up this last group and get them ready for deployment where they would be leaders, that I would get out of the military. Now she died before it happened, but the minute that I was able to send my soldiers back over, man, they all came back home. As a matter of fact, some of them got promoted, some of them are now sergeants, sergeant first classes, and up for master sergeant in the military. So I fulfilled the obligation. But in doing that, I made sure that on my album, I dedicated four of my songs to the military. How many people in here know somebody in the military? So you will probably be able to appreciate one of the songs. I did a song called I Salute. I did one called Leaders. I did a party song for them called Weekend Pass. And the last song on the album is called Post Traumatic Stress. And I think I'm gonna play Post Traumatic Stress just to see how y'all feel about it. How, can we do that? All right, we're gonna rock this real quick. Hold on a second. And I did that as a tribute because like I say, a lot of people talk about the soldiers. They talk about, you know, we miss them. They'll throw up the yellow ribbons. Be a day or two, somebody dies, but they forget. And it's a lot of families that suffer. It's a lot of soldiers that suffer from PTSD, 
from TBI. TBI is traumatic brain injury. That comes as a result of being too close to an explosion. Suddenly your head shakes. You can't physically see the damage, but the damage is there. Post-traumatic stress. You can't physically see the damage, but the damage is there. They'll say that ain't nothing wrong with you. You come home, I know soldiers that have came home, they got diagnosed with PTSD, they go to the VA, and you have people that never put on a uniform telling them that nothing's wrong with them. So they followed all the rules. They did everything they were supposed to do in the military. They get home, they expecting this system that's put in place to take care of them, to look out for them after they have served their country, after they did all they can do. They alienated from their children, their wives, their husbands, their parents. And the, the family doesn't know that there's something wrong with them. And the only link that they have to their sanity at this point is dependent on the VA to do right by them. And they hit them with claim denied. Claim denied. When you hear claim denied, I know so many people that committed suicide behind those words that it's ridiculous. So, that's just a little history lesson on me, hip hop, and that military uniform. Like you say, you got confused because you seen me in uniform. But do you, do you doubt my skill set based on what you've heard so far? Okay, you say, can you say that? So can we say we respect this? Okay, so what I'm gonna need y'all to do, I'm gonna give everybody a card. And what I'm gonna do, because I really, really like this group, I went to a radio station in Chicago. I'm not even gonna say what radio station it is. And I took, I took my music there. I ain't even gonna say it. But I took my music there. And my man told me, he said, the music is dope. He said, but we can't play this. And I said, why not? He said it's too positive. Too positive. Is it possible to have music that's too positive? There you go. Overqualified. That's, that's a great answer. Is it possible to have music that's too positive? So you're telling me that if you heard this music on the radio, you would listen to it. See, that's what I need. I need for the people to make their voices heard. So what I'm going to do I'm going to give you my cards. You can go to my website, check out my videos. There's a video on there for City on my back. And you're actually going to see what I was talking about because I broke it down in the video. But we have to chime in. So I'm taking the music to the streets. I decided since the radio won't play, I'm coming to y'all myself. And when I present it to you, it's like a job interview. You give me the interview, I get the job. Period. And I dare anybody that thinks that they can outdo me to step down into the mic. We can put some, we can put some topics inside a hat and freestyle. Because that's how I used to do it coming up. And I see the red hat, he looking like, yeah, I challenge you guys. Come on up here, what you got? <laughs> but with that being said, what I want to do, I want to make sure that I get everybody in this crowd a CD. And that's on me. And that's going to be my thank you to Sherry Cannon and the whole Renewed Conference for having me out and letting me display my music and tell my story to you. Is that cool with everybody?